I'm here to talk about the Man of Steel himself. I'm here to talk about Superman. I loved the Man of Steel miniseries up to a point. I did feel it fell a little flat at the end and didn't quite stick the landing. I think the sixth issue might have been the weakest, and you really shouldn't close on your weakest uh, on your weakest issue. Superman did not defeat the villain. Supergirl did. And spoilers, at the end of the series, again, spoilers for a lot of stuff in this. If you haven't read Menace Dale, turn it off now. <laughs> Superman, as I said, didn't defeat the villain. Supergirl did. And he let... Jorel take his wife and child away from him, leaving the ending of this issue very flat, very sad. Not where you, I thought this kind of reintroduction, this first Brian Michael Bendis story was going to end. I thought it was going to end on a happy note, but you know what? That's the story he wanted to tell. He told that story. He told it very well. It just wasn't quite the story I wanted to heal here. But coming off the flat ending of Man of Steel, we have Superman number one. And look at that beautiful cover. Oh my God, that's a beautiful cover. That's what I want. Big chin, sun coming over, got the red trunks on. That's Superman to me. Let's flip it open. It has a great opening splash page. Uh, and this is comic art. It's not crazy digital stuff. It's not, it's not overdone. This is, this is pure comic art here. And it looks great. The whole book looks great by Ivan Reese. But they have this great introduction that, that, that goes a little something like this. Rocketed to Earth from the doomed planet Krypton as an infant. Kal-El was adopted by the loving Kent family and raised in America's heartland as Clark Kent, using his immense solar-fueled powers to become Superman to defend humankind against all manner of threats. While champion truth, justice, and the American way. Truth, justice, and the American way. I love that in my Superman comics. But then we have this. This right here recaps the entire Man of Steel miniseries from beginning to end. It's all right here. So if you buy Superman number one, you can kind of skip out on the Man of Steel miniseries. It's all right here. I wish I knew this was going to happen. It would have saved me the $24 I spent on Man of Steel. But this picks up right where Man of Steel left off, where Superman's off. I have to find my family. He's flying through space, trying to locate the spaceship that Jorel took uh, Lois and Jonathan in. He's just kind of just searching space anywhere he can find it. He's just kind of flying out in the space, hoping to find them. And he runs across this. All right, here we have, these are the Dominators. Um, I think he yeah, even calls them a Dominator Armada. Now, the Dominators, they're a space alien. Here they are. They're a space alien villain of the DC Universe that were first introduced... God, I think it was Adventure Comics number 361. It was a Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes story by the great Jim Shooter. And they were also the star of this great series. This was a great uh, 1998 crossover series that DC Comics did. It was called Invasion. There was three main issues and a bunch of tie-ins. The main issues and the whole plot overall was by Keith, Keith Giffen with Bill Manto writing the script. And this was Bill Manto's first job at DC Comics to, to kind of pin this massive epic uh, invasion storyline that had the Dominators bringing a whole armada to Earth to invade it to, the, to pretty much wipe out the superheroes. Um, this happened, and this was also the first two issues illustrated by the great Todd McFarlane. Yes. Again, this was 1989. It was a great series. I felt it was at the time. I need to go back and revisit it. Maybe I'll do that. But here they are again. The Dominators are back, and Superman says they're heading straight toward Earth, and he's going to stop them. So he stops them. Now, this is. There's this nice page of you know Superman punching out the bad guys, attacking them fist first and all that. Now this was the same the same race that it took the entirety of the DC superhero pantheon to stop before in '98, but Superman kind of just punches a crap out of them here in this book and defeats them. Um, did Superman kill them? That's huh. That's something to think about. It looks like I don't know. We don't want to think too hard on that. So all of a sudden, for no real reason. Uh, this causes uh, Clark to go, I need to head back to Earth. That's where I'm supposed to be. Um, even though he's leaving his family kind of out in space, he, he has this dialogue here that says, and it politely reminded me where I'm actually needed. I know you have this, Lois. I know you're okay. I'm just, and shoo, he rockets back toward Earth. And we have this page. This is a very nice, done, kind of sad flashback as Superman, you know, he's sitting in his bed thinking back to, uh, you know, when Lois was still there, which, you know, obviously they're gone now because of the events of Man of Steel. And this is great. But then they have another flash page, uh, flashback page like this, and it's a little overdone if you ask me. Um, we get it. Superman's sad, and we're going to seem like we're going to dwell on that for just a little bit longer than I think is necessary. Again, it's well written. It's, <laughs> I can't say anything bad about the way Bendis wrote this, and the art is amazing. 
I just I'm just not thrilled with his plot choices. It's I, I don't know. It's just not uh, winning me. So we're back at the wreckage of the Fortress of Solitude, which got destroyed in the Man of Steel miniseries. And you have Superman with his friends. They're kind of mourning it. I don't know even why they're all there. He goes and he pulls this piece of purple kryptonite or whatever this is out of the ground, takes it to the Bermuda Triangle, throws it in, and creates a new Fortress of Solitude in the Bermuda Triangle. Now, I don't know, in the DC Universe, maybe the Bermuda Triangle is some hard place that's really hard to get to and, and hidden away and nobody can go into it. But here in the real world, it's right off the coast of Florida. I could really take a boat to, um, to where the Man of Steel put his uh, Fortress of Solitude. If you ask me, it's not very, uh, it's not very secluded. It's an odd choice, but it's a choice that was made. And there's a, there's a little bit in the back of the book where they talk about designing the new Fortress of Solitude. So... We'll see where it goes. I'm not, I'm not against it so much. It just seems like an odd location for it. And we catch up with Clark. He's at the Daily Planet doing his Daily Planet stuff. Not thrilled. Not thrilled when Superman says bad words. I don't know. I'm not thrilled about that. But what's this headline says? Uh, the rash of suspicious fires takes three more lives. So this goes back to the, um, the kind of arson or fire storyline that was uh, featured in the Man of Steel miniseries. And... Was kind of the cliffhanger of the series, which was supposed to bring you in to um, to want to read this series. I'm not, I don't know if I don't know if that cliffhanger was that great, but I'm still interested in this fire storyline. It's it's one of the more interesting pieces that came out of Men of Steel. He's trying to call what is this Deputy Chief Mel- Melody Moore, but he gets he hears a voice, and it's the voice of Martian Manhunter. All right, we got a guest star in this book, and they have this conversation. Now here. Again, it's so well written and it's so well illustrated. It's hard to criticize, but it just wasn't for me. This is long conversation with Manhunter. That's one. And then it's two. And then it's three, four, five, six pages of just this long conversation with Martian Manhunter where Martian Manhunter is trying to convince Superman that he should take over as leader of the world. It's as if he doesn't know Kal-El and doesn't know he's, just, he's never going to say yes to that. But there's, while he's talking to Manhunter, he's flying away and taking care of business, you might say, things that are going on while the conversation is happening. And there's this giant purple lizard attacking London. And then there's this, then there's another fire and Superman saves these kids. And then something happens with apes and a space shuttle on the moon. These are all great concepts, great ideas, but they're just one panel. They're well illustrated, again, beautifully illustrated, but just one panel. Meanwhile, we're dealing with this conversation that's con that just does not want to end it just goes on and on where all this stuff is much more interesting than the conversation i would love to read a comic about this a comic about that and a comic about that these are three great ideas that bendis tossed in here but we're, we're treated to this long drawn out conversation where manhunter's trying to get superman to become leader of the earth and he's just never going to do it this does not end superman's character so Superman takes off flying. He's angry. He's thinking back to his wife and uh, son being taken away. And then something happens. That's where I'm going to end it. I don't want to spoil the ending of the book. Um, like I said, the fire storyline is interesting, but that meeting with Martian Manhunter, man, it nearly kills the book. However, the cliffhanger at the end, the cliffhanger at the end was solid. It, that's enough to make me want to come back. But if I'm coming back to more of these panels of just constant conversations that are boring and a little dull and I think have been have already happened in the past before I, I might be checking out of Superman I don't I don't want to say that because I like I love the character of Superman and I think Bendis is doing a good job writing his voice and the, and he's a great writer it's just these stories aren't, aren't aren't winning it for me so that's my take on Superman number one I'm going to recommend it I recommend it if you like especially if you like Superman it's a good Superman it's a good take on Superman it's just the actual execution is falling a little flat for me. So that's about it for Superman. I do want to say, if you're in, South, you're in the South Florida area, uh, this weekend, July 14th, stop by the South Florida Science Center. Um, there's an event called the E4 Life event. It's a, it's a green event. We're going to be there. Um, again, it's July 14th at the Science Center. More information about that can be found on our website at cosmictimes.net. Just hit the event tab. We also have something coming up at the West Boynton Beach Rec Center on July 16th. I'm doing um, some, not classes, but talking to kids about comics. And if you would like to have us come talk to your organization or do an event at your school or something, hey, Heidi's email address is on the website. Hit her up. We'll be happy to set something up and get me to come out to your school or organization and do a presentation. Also, Gotta say PalmCon's coming up. Go to PalmCon.net to learn more about a Comic-Con on a cruise ship. Um, It's well worth checking out. And if you're watching this on Facebook, 
please leave a comment below so maybe we can talk about Superman number one and the potential for Bendis to do great things or possibly mess it up. If you're watching this on YouTube, hey, give a comment below as well too. But, but, but do me a favor. Go ahead and like the video, hit the subscribe button, and then click on the bell. That would be great. I think that's about it. I'm looking forward to what Bendis is going to do in Action Comics number 1001. I want to see if the tone of that book is any different than Superman. Um, I guess that's about it. Until next time, stay cosmic.